Hi, my name's Andy, and this is this week's Shush, and we're thinking all about connection. And I want to begin with this thought that I read recently and was inspired by. It's a saying of a South American bishop who got his name for caring for people in the poorest of communities was one of those people who always got himself into trouble with governments and people in authority by questioning what they did and speaking up for uh, kind of people on the margins. His name was Bishop Kamara and he believed in community and relationships and thought that that was the way that we would eventually form societies that lifted people out of poverty. And he said this once, to walk alone is possible but the good walker knows that the great trip is life and it requires companions. To walk alone is possible, but the good walker knows that the great trip is life and it requires companions. So I'd like us to begin this morning, this afternoon or whenever you're watching this, with gratefulness for those people who walk our journey with us. Imagine yourself walking a path, one step in front of the other, and imagine that is your life, the great trip of life. Who walks with you? There may be one or two names, there may be many that you come, that come to mind spend a little bit of time thinking about those people and being grateful for them as we begin this session. To walk alone is possible but the good walker knows that the great trip is life and it requires companions. What do we mean by connection? Well, this is how Brené Brown uh, defines it. I define connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued. When they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from relationships. So in thinking about the connections you have, it's really important to recognize that your well-being, your health, all of the strength that you gain as a person doesn't just come from you. If our only journey is to discover ourself, we will be limited. A little bit like an island, not connected to anything else. It can exist, but it needs that travel in from outside to stay connected to the world around it. So we are, as people, we're not islands. There's an African proverb, Ubuntu, and the idea is I am because we are, that our lives are connected up into the lives and the experiences of others and we are formed not just by ourselves but by all that's around us and things outside us. That it can include everything from influences and relationships, even faith and beliefs and values. But I'm not, I can't make myself on my own is what I'm trying to get at. So Brené Brown talks about connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard, and valued. So just take yourself through those three words to start with. Who sees you? Who listens to you? those people who value you because you are valued you are enough you are loved and worthy of love who sees you who listens to you and who values you be grateful for those people and those connections today and notice how they shape you. 
We talk about our well-being triangle, that you derive your sense of well-being from an understanding of yourself, from an engagement of something other than wonder or spirituality, all of those things that you can't put on an x-ray, but also from authentic connection with others. So think about the strength and sustenance you derive from those relationships. And draw into that today. Why don't you think about somebody that you've not connected with for a while and make time and space to do that. But also recognise that others draw strength and sustenance from you. What can you give to those people today? How can you be a source of strength to those around you today? How can you help them on their journey towards their well-being? To help us with this, we're going to use a poem. And the poem is called The Gentle Rhythm of Togetherness. And as I read it, I want you to just allow the rhythms of connection to speak to you that you gain from others, but also they gain from you, that in and out, that gentle beat, almost like a heartbeat of connection that can exist. So the poem's called The Gentle Rhythm of Togetherness. We are gathered. Together we become more, we add not subtract, we are a force. This is the beauty of shared lives, faces familiar, faces new, lives that carry joy, others that carry pain. Together we carry the load and we listen to the gentle rhythm of togetherness. We are gathered witnesses to the true value of family tonight we are brothers and sisters we beat with the blood of community we share we connect we love a symbiosis of subtlety not the loss of me but the gain of you we are rich together we are loved and we listen to the gentle rhythm of togetherness we are gathered, speaking God words in kind action, our cadence flows like rhythm. We surround each other, dancing to the music of our souls. We belong. Here in a moment of communion, we are more that you are here. Together we are welcomed and we listen to the gentle rhythm of togetherness. The opposite of a sense of connection can be loneliness. Many studies, one of them by the co-op, found that, that actually loneliness could be more dangerous to our health than smoking. And the writer and thinker Gotha said it like this, the world is so empty if one thinks only of mountains and rivers and cities, but to know someone who thinks and feels with us who through, though distant, is close to us in spirit. This makes the earth for us an inhabited garden. The light that a relationship with somebody else can bring to our life compared to that sense of isolation is difficult. So I'd like you to take time to sit with the emotions that you feel with this subject of connection. Maybe this brightens you, the expectation of all that's to come with the lifting of lockdowns, the hope of connection in the future, of hugs, of spending time, of the bustle of a pub or a festival or a, a concert, of being out amongst people, the lack of distancing. 
maybe there you're living with a, a relationship that's broken or that's breaking hold that pain for a while and be okay to hold it don't shy away from it that's where you are right now Maybe you feel isolated and so this subject feels painful to you. Reach out in hope. Recognize the people you do have. And be grateful for them and reach out in hope for the potential of a greater sense of connection. Or hold that pain and realize that's where you are and you feel that. But don't hold it to get sucked into it. Hold it as something that in recognizing that pain of loneliness is the step change to, that's the start of how you might step out of it. And recognize our role in this. We are not just receivers of relationships, but we may well be the answer to somebody's sense of isolation. Who do you know at the moment who's struggling finding it hard in this area how might you reach out to them today take time now as some music plays and we look at this simple image that we use so often of a candle burning and I always think about people when I see candles burning because I see so often people lighting them to remember them to be thankful for them to think about those who are lost such a symbol of people so as you look at these candles remember those people you know who are struggling and think of ways you could reach out to them how can you be somebody who makes connections with others today So Brené Brown's definition to find connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen and heard and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment, and when they derive sustenance and strength from that relationship. Take time to draw sustenance and strength from your relationships and be sustenance and strength to others today. Because we know that the great trip is life and it requires companions. We hope you're well. Take care of yourself. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all very, very soon. But in the meantime, take care. And we'll see you next week with another shush.